Joining us now is a guy who had a home run in his very first major league postseason at bat, Dodgers second baseman Gavin Lux with us from his home in Kenosha, Wisconsin right now. And Gavin, I know, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. This is not where any of us expected to be. I know you didn't expect to be uh, back there in Wisconsin in the early part of April. So what have you been doing and how have you been getting by during these last four weeks without any baseball at all? Yeah, it's tough, man. I mean, especially it's like we got so close to getting the season rolling around, you know, a couple weeks away, you know, you kind of get that itch and then uh, you get shut down. But right now um, I have a gym that I can still work out at. Uh, one of my buddies owns it, so he gave me the keys and just said, you know, you'll be the only one in there. But it allows me to get my work done still. And then um, I got a, my uncle's got a cage I can still hit in. So kind of piecing it together as we go, but uh, you know, you got to make, make do with what you got. All right, so it's four weeks of doing this now, Gavin. So what is a typical day like in your life now with this social distancing, physical distancing, and, and isolating, really? Yeah, I mean, there's only so much you can work out and hit before, you you know, you, you, you can't do it anymore. So I've been uh, playing a lot of Call of Duty, a lot, a lot of the show, just to try to pass the time and um, watch Netflix shows and just kind of, it's you know, you, you try to make the good out of it, at least, you know, I'm with my family, who I usually don't get to see a lot this time of year. So uh, that's a positive of it, but just uh, trying to find ways to stay busy, you know, otherwise you lose your mind, you know. All right, so since you said Netflix, are you a Tiger King guy, yes or no? Because we've already had JT on here. We've had Stan Cast and Dave Roberts. <laughs> They've even watched Tiger King. I have not watched Tiger King yet. <laughs> I watched the first two episodes and I just I couldn't really get into it. So I just uh, I just kind of I just turned it off. I found something else to watch. So I can't really get into documentaries. It was just, I couldn't get interested in it. Yeah, I binged all seven episodes in one day, and then I felt like I needed to take a shower after that. It was just that kind of a <laughs> that kind of a thing. But your strength and conditioning coach, Brandon McDaniel, he issued a challenge, Gavin, to yourself and also to your teammates to to be creative with some of your workouts. And he was praising you somewhat for what you did. So tell us what you came up with. Yeah, before uh, before I had access to the gym, um, a really good family friend of mine owns a gym in Milwaukee. So. Uh, I was able to drive up in um, my car and then fill it up with uh, barbell, dumbbells, um, physio balls, uh, kettlebells, kind of anything I could grab it and fit in my car. I threw it in there and put everything, made a little home gym in, in my basement. And uh, I was doing pull-ups on like this pipe that was in my laundry room. That I, <laughs> It was like the only thing I could like hold my body weight. So uh, I kind of got creative there. Uh, um, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You do have to do what you have to do at this point just to get through and to keep yourself somewhat prepared for when the regular season does get here. But another thing you were doing during the off season, Gavin, was you started a YouTube channel. You have several uh, clips on there, of kind of a day in the life and, and what you do during the off season. How did that whole idea come about and what can fans maybe learn about you? Yeah, so 8-7, the media company, uh, came up to me uh, approached me in the off season, just said basically like, hey, this is a really good opportunity for fans to be able to interact with you and kind of, you know, understand um, what you're doing in the off season, and it just makes you more relatable. And you know, I really like the idea because MLB talks about, you know, it's uh, let the let the kids play and trying to to create a younger fan base. And everything's on social media now. It feels like so. What better way to be able to interact than um, you know, giving them a little bit of insight on my personal life uh, and what I kind of do in the off season. So that was the idea behind it. You know, during the season, it's kind of hard. It probably wouldn't work. Just there's too much going on, and, and my focus is completely on the games. But off season, when you got a lot of downtime, uh, it kind of worked out that way. All right, so let's talk a little bit of baseball here. Gavin, Justin Turner was on with us last week, and he said at that time he had not swung a bat at all since that last spring training game that drizzly night when you guys were playing at Camelback Ranch and I know you played that night as well what kind of baseball activities have you been able to do if any since that night yeah uh, I still have been hitting probably three or four times a week and uh, taking ground balls and throwing whenever I can that's a little bit harder uh, so I'm still probably doing some baseball activity three four five times a week 
Uh, the weather hasn't been too good, and there's nowhere to, to get outside, really, uh, and get inside either. Everything's shut down, so it makes it a little tougher, but uh, whenever I can get outside, even if it's 45, and which it has been recently, uh, still find a way to get out and hit BP and take some ground balls, but uh, JT's the seasoned vet. JT's got it down. <laughs> Yeah, he seems like one of those guys he could just roll out of bed after a few months off and just and just hit. Yeah, he could roll out of bed right now and hit 320 probably. So what do you think spring training 2.0 is going to look like for, for all of you guys, Gavin? And how long do you think you will need personally to be ready for meaningful regular season games when we get to that point? Yeah, uh, hopefully this dies down sooner than, than later. You know, hopefully everyone's staying safe, but... Um, I think probably two weeks, two weeks minimum, and I think that's more for the, the pitchers to get built up again. I think if you get 20, 30 at-bats, I'll probably be ready to roll again. Uh, but it's just I think everyone's just anxious and wants to get out and, and, and start playing games. Uh, it's weird being home right now at this time of the year because you're always so used to being gone. Uh, so I think everyone's just itching to start playing. Yeah, obviously everyone understands the serious magnitude of what is going on, this global pandemic that we're dealing with, and that's why you're at home and all of us are staying at home as much as possible. But one thing that Justin Turner brought up with us last week, Gavin, he felt bad for some of the young guys, guys like yourself who were looking forward to having your first ever Major League opening day, and you didn't get that. You were denied that experience, and you might have an opening day in front of no fans at all. Is that something that crossed your mind a couple of weeks ago when March 26th, the arrived and you woke up and you didn't get a chance to, to be there for big league opening day. Yeah, I think it, it's tough, man. Uh, that's kind of something as you're coming up, you dream about getting the run out there on opening day. Uh, but at the end of the day, obviously the health is more important than whenever opening day is, even if there's no fans, it'll be different, obviously, but um, you know, it's still opening day and then you still get the baseball jitters out and and go play with your your boys so i think that's that's the biggest thing for me when you look back on your first taste of the big league experience last year coming up last september playing in october as well uh in those playoffs against the washington nationals gavin what was your biggest takeaway from that first taste yeah i think you just get your feet wet um you don't know what to expect until you you're actually you're actually there and then playing and I think the playoff atmosphere is completely different than, than a regular season game. And, uh, you know, you just kind of learn how to navigate through at bats under high pressure situations. And every pitch and every play is so much more under, under the microscope where, you know, it's, it's a lot bigger deal if, if you lose in the playoffs and, uh, than the regular season. Obviously, they're both big deals, but uh, playoff, everything's just under a microscope. And, you know, the best, uh, just got to get hot at the right time. I was talking with one of our friends, Nomar Garcia Parr, here in studio just a couple of months ago, and I was looking at your numbers in September and comparing to his September call-up numbers, and they were actually really similar, right around 240 batting average, a few home runs for both of you guys. Then he came back in his rookie year, Gavin, has a 30-game hitting streak, hits 30 home runs, wins AL Rookie of the Year. Not that you've set those kind of expectations for yourself or for anyone, but do you have goals in mind when you think about your rookie season? Yeah, absolutely. I think yeah, as any any rookie, you know, you want to go out there and win rookie of the year and, and compete for that. But for me, I think the, the end goal is, is, you know, you want to win a World Series and especially with the team we got and the guys in that clubhouse and the culture that's been built. I think that's the number one priority and in any individual accolades or awards or whatever it may be come second. But uh, I think everyone in a Dodger uniform or personnel and fans and everyone involved. I think, you know, we we all want to win a World Series and that obviously comes first. Yeah, win that last game in October or maybe this year in November or whenever that final game of the season <laughs> might be. It is. <laughs> it is crazy here. Well, we can't wait to see, Gavin, what's in store for your rookie season whenever that does get underway. Until then, take care of yourself, stay healthy and stay at home and hopefully we'll see you on the diamond soon. Thanks. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me.